Welcome back, everybody, to the Hearthstone Grand Prix here at DreamHack Winter 2015. It's time to continue through the round of 16. We have two more matches today. Uh, and the next one coming up is Purple from Gamer's Origin versus a youngster named Dragon Albert. Uh, I am Nimsh. I'm joined by... Uh, oh, sorry. I am Frodan. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm joined by well, Nimsh. I am Frodan. And, <laughs> and we're here with Lothar. And, uh, no, I'm just, I'm just Raven. Okay. I'm just Raven. Uh, okay, okay, <laughs> cool. Uh, my bad. I just had an identity crisis on stream. Um, so, I, I am Frodan. I'm joined by Nimsh and Raven. Uh, and Nimsh, you were doing such a good job like getting to know some of these players, but you were taking a particular notice towards Dragon Albert, or I mean, we'll just call him Albert, maybe for short. Um, and you were just really getting to know him, uh, and you are just learning that, you know, he's just like this young guy who really loves Hearthstone and just playing some of it. Just what, what do you really expect his chances are against a really strong player like Purple? Well, I did ask him, how do you feel versus uh, versus Purple? Because, you know, a lot of players can get intimidated when they play versus NA champion at, at this tournament. This is his first LAN experience as well, and he said, I'm just going to crash him. And he said, <laughs> old bones Confidence. break easily. And Purple was I know, so and Purple's like 24. It's like, <laughs> come on, man. He's not even that old. Well, he's older than Albert for sure. Yeah. I mean, Albert's 16. Uh, I mean, he's he's kind of like that character in Pokemon who always keeps calling you about his Rattata. It's like, <laughs> he's like youngster Joey, literally. It's like, ah, shorts are the best. <laughs> I love Hearthstone. <laughs> he's, um, a, he's a really cheerful, funny guy. Like yeah, he was, I, I mentioned yeah, yeah. him before. He was the first to get to yeah. top 16, and he was just like jumping in and being super happy about it. Yeah. And really also, cheerful. you mentioned that like he seemed to have dodged all the big names in the tournament, so no one really knows what decks he's playing either, which is crazy. And on the flip side of that, you know, everyone knows Purple very well, as you said, NA champion, and he was actually been on stream before. So, uh, and I think everyone's been talking about the uh, the run he's gone with his Malilock deck, which is really one of the breakout decks here. Yeah, he's just gone. He's absolutely stumped with it, but knowing already because Warlock, especially at the moment, has even more slight variations on decks it can run. Uh, but knowing straight away, right, well, I, I know it's Malilock. I know it runs Bran. So you can sort of, that, oh. that extra information is really important. The irony, guys. Yeah, that is purple. really big. Yeah, that's really big. But uh, imagine the irony where Purple's main deck is Dragon Warlock, and now <laughs> he has to face Dragon Albert to advance to the top eight. Well, I think it's also a little bit funny that they consider Purple from France. I mean, he is part of the French community, but he also hails from Canada, so... He's representing both NA and EU. He's one of these interesting, uh, I just want to say ambassadors on both the French and the the NA side of stuff. And, uh, you know, Purple comes in here as a very interesting player these days. He has been very good against a lot of decks with the Dragon Warlock, but none more interesting than Control Warrior, which is a fantastic matchup against this deck. Um, you're, because your your burn is not so powerful to end the game, you have to be very minion focused. And oh. I am interested <laughs> oh, <man>. to see <laughs> if he can ride this momentum. And he just picked up the Bloodsail Corsair, a weapon removal. Uh, and I don't know if Dragon Albert will be anticipating that, so yeah. to speak. What's interesting about Albert's hand is that he has true, uh, the uh, uh, Justicar in hand already. So like, that's going to be really important because uh, one of the win conditions for Mali Lock is to do a huge burst at the end. But if you just, we've seen some matchups like when Warriors can just go probably past 50, 60 health. Even, it, you know, you see Warrior Mirrors that go up to like over 100 health. But even like 50, 60 health is pretty reasonable, especially with True Heart on six. So like, he might just have the game plan, knowing it's Mali Ghost Lock, to just say, I am going to just have more health than you can burst. And hopefully... Uh, he can deal with the minions on board because the other win, uh, win condition for my luck is actually just the minion beatdown style. Yeah, absolutely. So purple just needs to get those minions and, and play them and start doing damage. But on the other hand, Dragon Albert actually has all the answers. He has shield stamps, he has executes, and that just to too hard uh, to, to buy himself even more time. Even a brawl, worst case scenario. Absolutely, so yeah. there's, there's a wow. lot of answers here. So it's going to be really interesting to see which one can actually push ahead a little more and get the advantage. Both these guys drew... I would say rather poorly in the early game. Um, the whole purpose of Purple's deck was to curve out very strongly, and the fact that he didn't have a four mana play with Twilight Guardian or Twilight Drake, um, on top of the fact that Dragon Albert didn't get any weapons early on or any you know acolytes and other ways to cycle through his deck, so they both had just hero power. And I'm not sure. I feel like in the end. Um, that does end up helping the Dragon Warlock a lot, because now all of a sudden the minions are more relevant. Like, how do you actually kill off this Twilight Drake now? It can actually fight without being executed immediately. Yeah, but on the other hand, you do have that removal card, so... 
Uh, Sludge Belcher is pretty good because it can deal free damage to mm -hmm. the Twilight Drake, and then with seven, it should be manageable, especially if you pick up some more armor gain, maybe. And uh, even with True Heart, like you don't have to use the shield stumps now. Maybe the board will be good enough to brawl and then use True Heart, True Heart later. And then armor is never a problem after you play True Heart. Yeah, and especially because at the moment, unless like, a strong Emperor turn happens, then like it's really difficult to play Maligos and then play spells the same turn. So if he plays Maligos and the Warrior's on like 20 armor, he's just like, yeah, okay, Shield Slam, done. So uh, that really does remove a big threat, which is why, as we mm. said earlier, I think uh, Purple needs to focus on the beatdown aspect of the deck and just get those big minions and hope he just burns through Albert's uh, removal quick enough or he just hasn't drawn it. Yeah, it's fascinating that Purple, uh, he even played around Shield Maiden, Shield Slam on his Twilight Drake, which is rather impressive. <laughs> yeah. um, and, and now uh, he's instead, because he's Blackwing Corruptor in this way, he's given up his little Dark Peddler, and he, did, he didn't end up using the Mortal Coil, so he has a couple of interesting resources that I wasn't anticipating him having. And now he's going to go for the good old Big Game Hunter combination here. Um, for just a lot of board tempo, and it, this is okay because you're like, wait, wait, hold on, he has PGH, why? he has so many other targets, he's playing Control Warrior. Purple plays two big game hunters specifically yeah. in this deck, so he can use the first one for tempo in this way. It'll force a lot of pressure onto the Control Warrior, and the closer that Purple can tap into Emperor Thorson, the better. Meanwhile, in Dragon Albert's land, uh, he's starting to now pick up some of his small removal pieces, but it's starting to look a little awkward. Yeah, I think he's really lacking a weapon. I mean, I know we can see that there's like a partial answer to it in Purple's hand, but mm -hmm. it, a Death Spite would be really useful at the moment just to start, you know, helping out with that removal. Can you get him? Like, with Garen, you deal with two uh, minions, and then you kind of go one by one into the 5-4. Maybe Shield Maiden Shield Slam is still the better option here because you... Because you lose the get in for free, and you're damaging yourself. But ah. you're killing two cards with that. Actually, three cards. So it's kind of like one for free. And not entirely because Big Game Hunter was used to deal yeah. with the minion before. Okay. But I think mainly he probably wouldn't have played it if he'd not seen any Big Game Hunters. But seeing one so early, um, it, you know, just playing the odds that he doesn't have the second one. So it required the minion removal in itself. And all this is doing is he's just trying to slow the game down and slow Purple down so he can start uh, sort of cashing in on True Heart's uh, hero power buff. Yeah, absolutely. Which, and the uh, aim for Warrior is basically to survive the, the Warlocks run out, runs out of cards, just to deal with all the threats. Yeah, it'll, it'll realistically be like Warlock is five, six, maybe even seven cards ahead in the fatigue battle. Yeah. So it's not like Purple can win a War of Attrition. He doesn't have Reno Jacks in his deck. Um, I guess the best that he can utilize the Brand Bronze Beard, in my opinion is through like either some of the really powerful health gains on the Twilight Guardian or yeah Twilight Drake, excuse me. Or in the off chance of like I don't know, maybe he removes a full weapon that way. It's really interesting stuff. For now he's going for the board extension and that might be the roll board actually. What's interesting is though, like we, we, he's doing enough and not overcommitting too much to cause a problem. Except it is burning through the removal, and the warrior's only got so much. And it's because the warlock on top of the Maligos finisher has these massive minions as well. Like it's not a game like the Control Warrior Mirror where you literally can afford to just sit and just uh, hero power every turn. So you've got to actually proactively uh, remove these minions. Well, Brawl, I mean, it might be one of the better Brawl turns, but you're still not required to. You can Shield Slam one minion, and then... Um, you can, Actually, you can even Shield Slam the Twilight Guardian, and then go ahead and play a second Shield Maiden, so that way you don't really miss anything on curve, uh, while you're able to still remove stuff. I think you want to eliminate the, the Azure Drake as a priority, generally speaking, though, because the spell power does make things really relevant, like a 4 damage Dark Bomb. Um, a two damage mortal coil. All these things are really annoying. Yeah, I mean, he could have um, he could have shield made and shield slam there, right? He could have. So to remove the guardian and then trade yeah. the other one into the drake and just leave the five one and the five five on the board versus the three three. But that is quite Ooh. susceptible to AOE. That's the problem. Yeah, this makes Hellfire really good in a matchup where it's kind of trashy, to be honest. Like <laughs> Hellfire generally is not a very good card. Um, you don't normally see warrior with four minions on the board, right? Control yeah. warrior anyway. Look at this clear. That spell power. cycle. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. But on the other hand, I can understand Dragon Lovebird. He just wanted to put as many threats on the board because he's running out of cards and using the shield stump 
Uh, you want to shoot some uh, later as well, especially because he used one shoot some and execute already. Yep. So, so there's something big, he would not have a way to deal with it. Only the brawl. Okay, I actually like this owl because then you can squeeze in at life tap. And then he can finally use Blackwing Corruptor. But this is definitely a brawl ish board. Um, so purple probably will not extend a little bit farther into it. Yeah, but on the other oh, hand, second brawl. brawl. Second brawl. Yeah, it's going to follow up. That's, That's something, the, yeah. something I actually expected from this deck because it's so control heavy that double brawl makes sense as well. But if there is a black and uh, corruptor surviving this, purple did no. not. No. Oh, what, did, what did you just say, Nick? Yeah, that's <laughs> a good outcome if for purple. If that card survives. <laughs> yeah, because then it'd be like two shield slams and an execute use. Maybe yeah. Mally goes to start and gets strong. Oh, that's an insane oh, card. Man. Look wow. at the value. Yeah, and, and even the zero mana uh, pirate is actually really good yeah, to just oops. play that whenever you want. Oops. And he has all <laughs> the combo parts almost because he has Sulfar, he has Dark Bomb, and he has Maligos. Yeah, this is dangerous. With how, how far away is he from Lethal, actually? Uh, let's see. Well, let's, let's assume that he can attack with everything. That's 14, and then he's got 17 burst. So 17 plus the 14 is 31. 31. His opponent's at 33 right now. But he can actually wow. pick up a soul fire, and then there's a chance to add even nine more. He only runs one soul fire. Oh, one soul fire double dark bomb. But if he has like a dark peddler that draws into a second soul fire, then he can keep both of those uh, for a full 10 mana turn, and then that's 20, 26. Or, e or even like a power overwhelming would help as well. Yeah, power overwhelming might have not some quite good as good as the spell, of course, with Malagos down, but sure. still an extra four damage when he's this close to lethal. Dark Peddler is so good in this deck because most of the Warlock cards that he can provide for one mana are actually supporting the overall strategy. Even Mortal Coil isn't terrible because with, with Malagos it's just removal. Yeah. Right? But just remove a minion. Second Brawl is like all these minions surviving is kind of annoying, and that's even the most annoying because it's like now you want to shield slam this. Yeah. Well, on the other hand, if there will be Thorison, you probably want to deal with Thorison as well. And uh, Thorison might be even more dangerous than just Azure Drake. Uh, Twilight Drake. Yes, and I Can like... Can you just Hellfire? Uh, uh, I mean, because if it opens the Drake up to execute, then that kind of sucks. But then that's both executes gone. Well, now he knows that bra both brawls are gone, so he can f feel free to extend to the board as much as he wants. And I think he just wants to work on the armor count as much as yeah. possible. And once again, he knows there's two more removal pieces that he has to be really wary of, and that's the second shield slam, and that is an execute. Not to mention that um, he's also wary of, like, what, what can my opponent, like, two-turn me with, like, Alex and Grom and weapons? Yeah. And now with Grom being used, that's a primary way for Warrior to even pressure... And Big Game Hunter number two was relevant because he's tapped through so much of his deck. Oh, that's Peddler as well. There's, there's a lot of reasons that I think... Uh, you just slam Peddler to see if you get this soul fire, right? Yeah, yeah. well, you just Because that just alters your game There's plan. no reason not to play it. Uh, he doesn't get a soul fire. So Lepinome <laughs> for two, two extra Half damage. Half a soul fire? No. <laughs> uh, uh, Voidwalker might be the best for w keeping your minions safe against weapon, but Flame Imp will seriously work on the armor count. All right, he doesn't want to take any damage. So Lepernome is kind of like Flame Imp, but just a little bit less damage. Yeah, it is. Actually, it, uh, it might be more damage even, because if he assume he's going to die, then Lepernome is kind of like four. Yeah, I, I can understand not wanting to take yeah. extra damage here. But that, I mean, that board's intimidating, and you really use Baron Getting, you really use two brawls. Like, what else AoE do you oh, have? Look, that, there's a weapon. Finally, that, a that weapon. It do, doesn't matter anymore. But, I mean, if you look at it, um, Purple recognized that Albert didn't really have draw card draw, and then he finally played an accolade, so he silenced it. And he's like, well, I think I'm like 13 cards in my deck, <laughs> and I think Purple's like about to deck out. <laughs> yeah, at like, uh, 25. <laughs> I mean, every turn, Purple basically drew two cards, and then his opponent drew one. It's like he's had a mana tie totem this entire game. And then the Emperor as well. Just being able to Emperor that many cards because of that situation was huge. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. What do you do? It just taps again. Acolyte. Why oh. not? <laughs> yeah, that's so fine. The Twilight Guardian is pretty good. With two brawls gone, he can just do what he wants this game. Like, it just doesn't matter anymore. Yeah, absolutely. Just play the biggest so You just minions. throw everything down, clear the durability. Like, you don't... <laughs> you, you, just only, the <laughs> you only oh. need to play Malagos when you have 100% so lethal. Sick. There's no reason to play it before. Yeah, absolutely. No risk involved. Malagos would just come down to finish the game. I love it. It shoots a scimitar. At the opponent's weapon. That is so great. <laughs> a scimitar? Yeah. Is it, is it a scimitar? Was it? Uh, no, I no, no. I mean, like, maybe that was a knife, actually. It's like the old days of Aladdin. 
You just like duel with them, swords versus sword. Well, in this case, Ragnaros is gonna have to pull off a really big shot, but even then, it's gonna hit the Leprechaun. It has to hit the. It has to hit the. The Chow, the chow I think. Yeah. Otherwise, he dies. Yeah, but this is probably Leprechaun hit. Yeah. Oh, oh well, I know it. I know it. always happens, right? <laughs> wow. I, you know, this matchup I think is really hard, and Purple feels like yeah. he navigated really well with the help of Albert's poor draws, and that's gonna wrap up the game. What a dominant performance by yeah. this deck. This is like one of its roughest matchups on paper. Yeah, we did talk about this deck a lot, but just witnessing it right now on stream is amazing. How yeah. powerful it is. And Purple played it really well. I mean, the, yeah. the fact that he just baited out the removal and stuff, you yeah. don't want the removal. Like, yeah. you're getting the um, the huge uh, Drake as well was like, well, you've kind of got to deal with it because there's the two, like, there's the beatdown aspect and the Malagos aspect. And he just, like, just pushed into, the, pushed into the board. And the second he saw a double brawl, but could then continue to just play more minions onto the board. It's like, I'll refill the board now. What are you actually going to do? There's just too many threats in this deck. Because as a warrior, you do have the brawls, shield stamps, executes, but there's like Twilight Drakes, Twilight Guardians, uh, Corruptors. Well, so is there Lothab even? I like mean, Torsen? I feel like Albert really was hurting because of the lack of weapons. Yeah, yeah, wrong. the lack of weapon just ma made the game Which run away even more. Ironic because it feels like in the end it sort of didn't matter because Purple also didn't play minions early on. He just tapped a ton. I think I think the only thing is the weapon, it, Death Bite, for example, would have reduced his need to play the two brawls yeah, as quickly exactly. as he did. Because that's when you're in danger. Corruptor. The second your second brawl is gone. You start getting very afraid as the warrior. Guys, I've just seen Dragon Wrath. Yeah, from, this, from this Albert. We know, right? Dragon Wrath. Yeah, I've seen Dragon, Dragon Wrath. Wrath. Demon Wrath. Oh, Demon Wrath. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's just like it's Dragon, Dragon Wrath now. There's so many dragons, man. But yeah, is it Reno Warlock then? Yeah, it Brad looks Brosby? like it should be because um, Reno Warlock really I benefits off something. like in Warlock specifically because all the varied removal. So I would assume so. Looks like Purple chooses the Mortal Coil just to be super safe here. Oh, there is Bran and Reno, so um, half of League of Explorers. Albert is a real explorer here. Well, uh, it's very interesting. He has Reno Jackson already in hand, and he has a Molten Giant. And most of these Reno decks, at best, have Molten Giant as their only card that has duplicate copies. And he's got some interesting choices. He's got... Like Brand Bronzebeard, for example. So that's very battle cry trigger happy. And things like the Acidic Swamp Ooze as a tech card. Yeah, I think the Ooze was actually in um, like Brian Kibler's uh, original list that he made like really quickly after Reno came out. Um, the Ooze was in there. So this look kind of looks like that one, but again with the addition of Brand, because who doesn't like that card doing crazy stuff, right? Yeah, absolutely. But like, what's most popular in Warlock decks to counter some metagame choices before and especially if you go in the toolbox, de toolbox deck and you need to include a good tool drop ooze i think is really fine yeah ooze is fine um and in this case though it's just gonna get traded very easily by the peddler and that's two twilight guardians which demands attention here from Dragon Albert, but he doesn't really have an answer. Yeah, this is the weird situation with Dragon decks where like drawing something like Maligos early on isn't as terrible as it is normally because it's a proc for all the other dragon effects in the yeah. game because that card isn't coming down for a while. Yeah. So the fact that you could just change Twilight Guardians uh, is really beneficial and also having Maligos early because you playing Thorison is so big. If you get that hit on Maligos, it just completely changes the game. Yeah, you basically yeah. So you want important. to hit. You want to hit Mal like you want to slam Thorison on six and hit Maligos and hit this one ripple. Wow, yeah, well, dark so big time draw again, yeah. and it's just more threats. So many dragons! And you know what? He's got Emperor Thorsten with Malagos already in hand, yeah. so that's going to make a lot of things really cheap to the point where um, Reno Jackson is is really good, but it can't survive like dying from 19. You're, you're trying to survive when you're, you're down to like 7 or yeah. lower and your opponent's really reaching. It would be ideal for Purple to draw into Dark Bomb or Soulfire, but what can Dragon Lover do here? <laughs> Let's see, well, uh, Demon Wrath, does it have some relevance? You you can clear a couple of these dragons, but you still ultimately lose the board because you don't have good follow-up here. So he's just going to play Lothab and probably trade into this. Yeah, just getting one of the dragons is fine. But, like, Emperor Thoris in here is perfectly fine. Um, you probably don't play it because you don't want to hit the combo parts. 
Okay, so he just his hand's not that good. Yeah. This is something that probably um, we're making a couple of mistakes because I know some of us are playing this Mally Warlock, and I, I was dropping every pair of throws on, on Curve every single time, but yeah. I assume that maybe just you have to be careful of your hand. Yeah. I think what uh, the point like Nim raised before as well is that because you can burst him down from 20, but because he, this is a Reno Lock, if he o tries to overextend. Uh, uses the burst but doesn't quite finish him, then Reno comes out. So, so what you want to do is be really sure that whenever he wants, he can turn on that burst damage and finish the game from you know, X amount of health. Whereas if he just uh, played Emperor Thoris and then, he gets some decent like, uh, reductions, like the Malagos being the main one, but nothing that guarantees a big burst to sort of hit hit from a health point where Reno isn't effective to play anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Especially also because you have the Dark Peddler and you can pick up a soul fire. Yeah. You do want those cards. Uh, no soul fire. Shield for bearer. Go. Uh, <laughs> yeah, shield bearer, I guess. I was wondering, I was wondering whether you take the Dragon Egg Lesser just because evil. you have health higher. Yeah. All right, so what do you do with the force set? Stample Beacon Hunter, yeah, that makes sense. There was nothing else. Uh, I mean, you know that he has Molten Giants in this deck and Ragnaros. I'm not sure if I actually like that big game Hunter so much. I guess Chow is very counterproductive, but... Mm, you do want to pressure, though, right? You do want pressure, but he's not threat. He doesn't actually have lethal possibility set up. Um, the thing is, like, on next turn, he can drop that person, then hit Smaligos and Dark Bomb, and on turn 9, he can be able to cast the Dark Bomb to do damage. So... Oh, he can face. This means that this is uh, probably a big Huh. Target. Well, now... He can clear, right? Yeah, he can, he can clear. How much damage is there, though? Because with Abusive, that's 6. And then you have Hellfire and Dark, Dark Bomb, Bomb is 12. another 6, so it's 12. Doesn't well, look might, like it. He might actually go for the Torison Abusive. So Abusive go 6 to face, and then Torison, and then he has. But probably. I think not with the Reno deck. Uh, yeah, I think not what he needs Reno to worry about is if he puts him too low, then he'll just slash Reno, and then yeah, it's like sort of, it, it sort of reverses the game a little bit for him. Whereas, like, 13, at this point, what manner is he on 9? I mean, now he can actually. He can still Molten Giant and then Reno Jackson. Yeah. Which is a really big deal. Yeah, that's actually go. huge. So Reno is coming there. To, to be fair, be though, with this, he still has 7 damage on the board if the Drake trades into the BG. So he goes up to 30, that's fine, but he can put him to 23 straight away. Yeah, 23 with the upside of. And like, drop Thoris in this time. Dropping Thoris in. Because there's a Dart Bomb, right? Yeah, so. but he's still missing like Soulfire. He really wants this second damage spell. Hellfire is interesting. I think that gives him a full board clear too. Yeah, it actually he can go. Yeah. Now he can abusive into the Molten Giant, trade the three three into the four six, and then Hellfire. Okay, this is really bad at all. So, so this is and he had the early Hellfire. He has the zombie child, the shooter. <laughs> yeah, that paves the way for Emperor Thorson. Right, Bran, so. Bronze Beard, followed by two Boom Bots, or sorry, four Boom Bots. That's oh what I meant man, to say. the Bronze, Bronze Beard, Boom Bots combo. And like we were talking about, it's just like one of those things where I'm always very hesitant to like drop this big game hunters very early, but I think he was just sensing the opportunity to go really aggressive to go for this kill because he has the Emperor and the Maligos. I'm just amazed by Bronze Bronze Beard. There are so many possibilities, and mm, just for Boombots, there's so much damage. Yeah, and also this is the sort of the perfect situation you want Brand to be played in. He is not the only so minion on the board. It's not like you're playing him like on his own and then hoping you can do something cool oh, next turn. Like you played him, and there's a lot of other threats on the board. So now with no answer to uh, to Doctor Boom, I mean, I suppose the zero four is going to soak up all four Boombot hits, maybe if he chooses that way, or he could. Running with the 7-7. Seven, seven. He can actually yeah. steal he can just st Yeah, he can actually just mind control tech. But then on the other hand, do you really want to steal a zombie child? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. No, but if you steal, like, sh well, how about if you Shadow Flame? A boom you have 11 damage. Well, I was going to say so Shadow, like, Kazan Mystic, which is not going to do much. Yeah, that's true, actually. Kazan Mystic and Shadow Flame might actually be a pretty good option here. Yeah, it allows the opening for a lot of damage, and then you've still got the boom bots. 
and then because against Smiley Lot, you're not bothered about Molin Yangs because they're not <laughs> in the deck, so you can just push. Guess what? He wanted to use BGH to Shadow Flame, but he can't actually play BGH because <laughs> of Dr. Boom on the field. The steal's really. Oh, Unless he gets a 5 oh, for it. No, no, that's not the 2 1. Yeah, I think you definitely didn't want it had to happen. Yeah, I think you're right. The, the, um, the Kazakh Shadow Flame would have been really nice, actually. Oh no, that's not a good boom bot. Alright, try again. <laughs> and again. Uh, not a good oh boom bot, what is going on? Well, that's still a little damage. <laughs> now he gets a four. But with the zombie charm now, like Hellfire's like Hellfire's and then just heals. Well, two. now he's got Hellfire, Dark Bomb, Mortal Coil, and all of a sudden it looks like he survived the Doctor Boom pressure. Oh but what, oh, what? It's just for one. <laughs> I like to report a bug blizzard. Is this because he got four boom bots that they all still have to hit for the yeah. amount that only two can hit for? Quite possibly. This is huge now, because he can just Maligos and then pretty much kill whatever minion he wants next turn with Mortal Coil. Yeah, that's pretty good, but then you do play your Maligos, so if you lose Maligos, can you win after that? What's the way to lose? Uh, I suppose Reno decks run Siphon Soul, right? Yes, they usually so do. That's probably the, the main I worry. You said silence. <laughs> okay, you probably take the coil. You definitely don't want the flame imp. You're just gonna <laughs> yeah, take a lot of damage. Blood imp, go. Blood imp doesn't do much. But you did see double hellfire, and blood imp can provide a lot of health in the chorus of couple turns. I don't think you're playing for that though. I think the the mortal coil has more relevance, especially because you have a lot of these mid-sized minions that might need to trade with other things. Unless you think uh, you're thinking about fatigue, because they are actually pretty good in the deck. And okay, well flame let's imp do provides it. pressure. Flamin provides pressure, but you also take three damage. They are 27, and they still have a heal bot. If he reduces the cost of Soulfire and Dark Bomb, you're at mm, so you're working with nine or 17 damage burst. Yeah, I guess it's okay. Well, Savannah is actually pretty nice. Oh wait, wait, wait! I think maybe uh, Imp is better for Shadow Flame possibilities. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Alright, so as a drake for purple, just continuously tapping. Wow. And you can immortal coil this Emperor Thor's. And, and that's Sylvan such a big deal! Sylvana Shadow Flame. Sylvana Shadow Flame. You're gonna take it, and that should lock purple out. Yeah, I mean, what's what's the actual. What, how can purple win? He still has Azure Drakes, and they can provide some burst, but then Malaga's can 25 damage worth of burst? It, the, the, it <laughs> is tough, especially because there is a heal bot as well. Yeah, this is no really real. I think push it, I think the key point in this matchup was when it was pushed to 11 health, and then he could actually molt and giant arena and get the full effect to, to a decent enough heal. So Dragon Albert is just taking the Maligos, Whoa. changing his deck into Maligos Warlock. Suddenly, playing the flame that does help. And now with two Azure Drakes, two Dark Bombs, and Soul Fire, that is how much damage is that? It's a lot. Uh, now Blackwing Crafter can also do that, uh, do some damage. If he picks up Brand Bronze Beer... The bonus here as well is Hellfire actually kills the Malagos. <laughs> That's funny. So, so um, six nine. And Drax it's, is it's only a 13 burst. Purple. It's a 13 burst with one Azure Drake. Uh, with two, it becomes 16. And Blackwing Corruptor can also help with that damage pairing too, so... Can you tap into lethal? So it's six nine, and Hellfire is plus eight, so it's seventeen. If you pick up something like a Dark Bomb, you just win, because you can then just uh, Dark Bomb face, attack with everything to face, and Hellfire is win. Can I just throw the Malaga in there? I guess he's just gonna take it slow though, and he can just play like Kazan Mystic. He's life tapping again. No. He would actually dark boom. He would. He could actually win there. Yeah, he did. He didn't tap first. That's always tap first, unless you're on two health. Yeah, really but on the other hand, like you might not be used to playing with Maligos, so that everything does so much. Yeah, damage. but if you're used to playing with Warlock, can you think you're gonna tap? Okay, so the the Corruptor can actually just kill off Maligos. I can absolutely understand tapping at that point because, you know, Dragon Ogre is the first turn of it. And when you play versus someone like Purple, you get defensive. You stop playing about, hey, I can just win. You think about trying not I to lose. Try not to <laughs> lose. I have to survive this. A refreshment vendor. That's probably not going to do too much. I suppose it depends what you bother about. The problem with, with Jaraxxus in hand as well 
Like that, you can't really play it versus this deck. Because as we said, like, he's still not seen the Dark Bombs or the Soul Fire. So he still knows there is burn yeah. left in Purple's hand. So there's, and he's not under enough pressure, right? So there's just no reason to drop uh, Draxus anytime soon. And you do expect it really from, from Alagos because th th those are one of the, the win conditions. So they have to have it. And you've seen so many Drakes as well. Yeah. But he is con just he will continue to play super so safe, just clear the board Nikki. and survive. And yeah, he, he has looks like he's right? actually gonna coil first to yeah to not draw to not purpose get the deep, because yeah. he doesn't want to push over to fatigue. Uh, well, first the vendor, even though it heals purple a bit, is a solid minion. It's a three five. Reasonable sized minion for combat, especially after double her fire as well. You I feel like your board is probably pretty much safe for now. Well, you might have to ride the momentum here with just the Grand Bronze Beard. And no, I guess he doesn't have time. He's got to play Twilight Drake. I and end this game here. Don't see Purple winning this, actually. He is. Uh, oh, and an Army Gal for the. Yeah, it's pretty good. But I mean, at this point, he still has like a lot of removal options that he hasn't even tapped into, like Siphon Soul or. Twisting Nether. Yeah, I mean, it seems like Dragon Albert actually has it in the back. Yeah, Reno generally is supposed to be very good against these burst types of decks. So, uh, very strong game here. And I know uh, Purple is going to be really upset to lose a game here with the game. Yeah. He's going to see the Dart Bomb go down onto the 4 1 Drake, just to clean it up. And now he's just really got to think well, I have so much health, he has no cards left. Can I even die at this point? I won't be surprised if Purple just concedes. There we go. Yeah, <laughs> Purple just concedes yeah. this. So Dragon Albert is taking um, another... Oh, this is actually the first one for him. So it's a 1-1 one -one for now. Yeah, I think um, Purple played... I think a little impatient because if you think about it... Um, if you, I mean, I guess you can also say that he needed specifically his two Dark Bombs and his Soul Fires. Um, because that's the winning combination. If you can yeah. reduce all three of those plus the Mali Ghost, then that's a clean 26 damage. And, um, you know, there's no way that Dragon Armor can always stay at like 30, 20. Yeah, yeah. So and, and win the game. <laughs> so. Yeah. But it's I, so idealistic to say because there's so many things in decisions where, like, if he didn't use Mali Ghost there, maybe he just dies. You yeah. know, or maybe he doesn't actually have a good, clean way to deal with the Emperor. Also, he played Big M Hunter super fast, uh, like, on tempo instead of just keeping it for the big creatures. Yeah, right. but now he's seen a lot of the Reno deck. He's seen Ragnaros. You know, he's seen, like, the Defender of Argus and some of the other cards that, like, he's like, okay, this makes sense. Um... Did you, did, you, did you see, did you see the well. Kinsan Mystic? I mean, um, th those kinds of cards, that kind of yeah. knowledge does help because it's like, well, this is how many cards I have to be worried about. So how does this w deck work versus Druid? Druid is originally good versus Panda. How does yeah. it fare versus Reno decks? It's even, it's even better now because yeah. they have less Taunt Givers, I think. Yeah, it's, it's really key that the sort of four Taunt Givers to two Taunt Givers difference in the deck's pretty huge. Because with Druid, because they've got the ability to burst down from quite a reasonably high health total, then like even all the the extra healing might not be enough, and and when you start to force a warlock to or any class really to play around like a force combo, then like that's when they start playing like really like uh, ineffectively. But on the other hand, as a as a Reno warlock, you don't have to be really concerned about your health if you have Reno and heals. You yeah, have to draw Reno. but you have to draw Reno, yeah. and also there are sometimes small conditions that need to be met. Okay, he has a Molten Giant. So I was going to say, like, sometimes yeah. Yeah, I've had been in cases where I've had Reno and I haven't had a Molten Giant. I think Brian Killer was actually tweeting Whoa. recently that he tried playing some Reno decks, and after 12 games, he just checked his decks if he's still having Reno inside them. Oh, because it's just... That's a great way to troll somebody. If you're streaming with them and they're playing Reno decks, and then they go to the bathroom, you just go swap Reno. <laughs> yeah. This is like... You put it in, like, a Wisp. Miracle Rogue. <laughs> Wisp. You have to put in something subtle, right? Something subtle, yeah, I guess. Just a duplicate to make it even Harrison worse. Harrison Jones is dead. <laughs> yeah, just Harrison <laughs> Jones. <laughs> Wrong adventure. Or you put um, Elise Star Sticker in the future expan- uh, Yeah, and be like, oh. This card would be good if I had Reno. Well, actually with Elise you can uh, get Reno Jackson eventually. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, 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 like, yeah, I didn't take it out. I just made it a little harder. Yeah, you've just got to work a bit harder to draw that card, that's all. That's I, I can't wait for the Golden Monkey, it's going to be so hilarious. <laughs> it's going to be a highlight video sometime. And uh, the classic struggle of 
how Handlock ends up dealing with mid-sized minions. Like, he needs Abusive Sergeant for BGH. Siphon Cell? Yeah, but then Siphon Cell still gives complete initiative to the Druid, which is fine taking. Yeah, yeah. and this is, this, this is like, the, the, like we said oh. earlier, the, this is the drawback to uh, this type of deck. That, because you're running one of, so your answers aren't that consistent anymore. Warlock's the best class to do it with, I think. But overall, you still, you know, your chances of drawing something like the, the single Siphon or uh, all, all the other sort of removal is like so much lower. Every time I see an implosion on a bigger target, I'm like, is there a chance to crit? <laughs> Say we're on the target, just take one damage and go, that was just silly. It would be so funny if we have like critical heads in Hearthstone. It's like, you, pyro, you, you want more RNG you in Hearthstone? Pyro names. blast them and you crit and deal 20. Uh, oh my God. All right, well, uh, let's see. Demon Wrath. Not really as powerful as it as it could be, but it might be something worth noting because you can play the uh, you can play the acidic swamp boost. The downside of playing the molten here is that you don't really have a turn outside of molten, and you're asking to get punished by like savage or Yeah, but on the other hand, you need minions to fight back, so it might be the last turn where you can influence the board in some way and not die. Yeah, I mean, you could have cleared with BGH. Uh Shadow Flame, but that doesn't really feel good either. Because you have nothing on the board. Yeah. And Savage, oh, Savage Roar is in. Now that, that would have been lethal if he just like didn't Demon Wrath. There. Yeah. That was really dangerous to play the Molten Chan, but I mean I think sometimes it. though you have to make the play that's like has the most impact on the actual game. Because sometimes you just can't play around cards, right? Yeah, exactly. And you you're gonna lose eventually, yeah. so Well, he still has just a one one here. There is Reno Jackson though. Does he just have to slam Reno at this point? Is it is it active? I, I yeah, think he has so, Molten, right? Giant. Okay. I think that's the only duplicate he could play. Because we've not actually seen two Molten's yet, have we? He might so be he might still only he might run one. any duplicates. Yeah, he's playing a lot of threats, so... I think it's because of how core uh, Molten Giants are to a, an idea of life tapping a lot. Yeah. He's going to play uh, Ragnaros, but if this hits face, that's it! It's game over! Oh, if it hits a minion, that's really close as well. No! Oh, okay. And he knows. Yeah. He knows what time it is. Yeah, Savage Word. Just is finishing a game here. Savage Word. I wonder if uh, Purple might ask for BGH. <laughs> I think the problem there is like, he could have played Reno to survive, but with those two minions on board, and then the fact that the Druid dropped was so good, he would have just, uh, Purple would have just dropped even more stuff on the board and threatened with the Savage Word right. combo next turn. So, so the 30 health wouldn't have actually mattered in the long run. Yeah. He goes up to 30 and immediately goes back to 22, yep. and then with minions on board. And threatened. then the following turn could, was turn, uh, it was 9 mana, so he could have comboed as well, potentially. Yeah. But you know what? Like, Dragon Lobler is not out yet. He still has the strongest deck in the tournament. He has the Paladin, but Purple has two chances to take out this Paladin, which I feel like we've been down this road before. Druid and Warrior remain against Paladin. And Paladin just sometimes just continues paladin to destroy. Paladin sometimes Paladin. Yeah, Paladin does Paladin things. So we can see players talking to each other for now. There was our main admin, Asueda, talking with them as well. And uh, discussing some things. Well, we don't know what they are talking about, but yeah, Paladin is in really good position overall. And speaking about the admin team, actually, like they've done really well. The 200 yeah. man Swiss, and it's gone pretty smooth as far as I'm concerned. That's like pretty impressive. I've been I've been involved in a lot of Swiss tournaments in the past, and uh, it's not the easiest thing to keep oh. keep running <laughs> with so many people and the way like the timing works as well. With like where well, you can't just it's not like an elimination bracket where you can actually play ahead of schedule. You cannot move on, keeping everyone together, playing on time. It's really difficult. I have to say that um, from the card player background, normally at those tournaments when you have 200 people, you have much more staff. Like you have yeah, judges. Yeah. I think you have, normally you have around 20 people to to work with the 200 people set up and here I, we don't have that many and it worked really well um, the admins were uh, getting the scores the, the main admin is making good decisions and we also have the feature tables and we have I amanda helping us with that so I really good job the production team and admins looks like albert 
was running out of battery on his laptop, so he just asked Dad <laughs> to bring his charger over. Yeah, this could be an issue. And <laughs> it's like, well, you know, and just disconnects, and it's like, well, you didn't bring your own charger. What would happen in that scenario? I guess Purple would win because it's his own I fault. I didn't expect to get far enough for my battery to run out. <laughs> that that's, that's, that's your own incompetence, I guess, <laughs> so to speak. Well, we do see the Keeper Voldemort and Peacekeeper, which implies that it's more mid-range, but we've seen we this in Secrets. Yeah, 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 it's, it's like the slower version, right? Keep, Keeper is so good, you can play it in any version. Oh, double True Self is interesting, though, because a, <laughs> yeah. a lot of Secret Paladin decks now run, like, Only I'd one. say one's average and sometimes even none. Especially if you run Keeper as well. Like, it's another Forge that you want yeah. to incl include in the deck. So what do you even cut? Like, double True Silver, one Keeper maybe, one Consecration? Double yeah. pilot the trailer. Oh man, and he's got Harrison drops. Jones too. Um, so he's gonna be able to deal with one of these shoe silvers or even draw an insane amount of cards. What a draw! That made his hand so much better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Suddenly, really druid good. things. Can the Paladin things Harrison work Jones. out better than the druid thing? Harrison Report Jones didn't make it to the League of Explorers. That's pretty sad, right? Yeah, nah, he's about to collect a 1-3 weapon. I think you want to draw <laughs> a lot of cards with the fact that you have uh, Emperor Thorson in hand. Yeah, yeah. that's going to build up for like, it's oh like no. a perfect set. If you get an innervate... Better than Ancient of Lore. <laughs> if you get an innervate, you just slap innervate Thorson next turn. You, you might actually. Maybe. I mean, you also can just curve out Lotheb and Thorson. Yeah, it's still pretty good. No Quartermaster, which is the only scary thing for Purple, but I don't think he can afford to play it slow by, like, hero power rapping. Well, no swipe as well. Exactly, so... Is this deck definitely Secret Paladin? There is an Innervate, so now the question is... Uh, I think you have to, right? Innervate... Innervate Torsten, yeah, because... Um, it gives your hand so much quality after that. It does. Rap for one. Yeah, I think th there's definitely a, a, a point in which you say, well, Thorsten's definitely dead next turn. Really easy for the Paladin. But he's reduced so many cards that just do it. It just has to be done. It's so valuable. Well, Purple uh, disagrees with you. So a lot of this is still a good card. And he goes for Aspirin to have even more mana crystals. Much more minion fighting here. Yeah. And oh, Keeper Voldemon is reasonable, helps you fight on board, keeps a 3-1 and lets you only trade one to recruit him. At this point you might think about keeping Keeper as a removal card as well, so it's... He could play the um, the Aldo, right? Onto the... I wonder. Uh, yeah. is, is that worth Is he bothered about five damage? Or what will effectively be three damage with the heal? It's true, but it also s continues to make Lothab oh, somewhat oh. relevant. Unless he doesn't want to take that much damage. Yeah. I just think like the problem is, as you said, he might want to keep the uh, the, the keeper to uh, to actually kill off a minion. Because the difference between that and Aldor is that Aldor just lowers the attack, but the health is still there. Whereas they actually just put some yeah uh, three health sorry the keeper, so it's quite easily removed. Well, wow. Well, uh, he's gonna reduce Thorson fourth now? force of nature, Savage Lord. Yeah, that's pretty Pur good. Purple's kind of acknowledging that he's getting some really nutty draws here, <laughs> because he's he's just like wow goes on right on time, and just before the Thorson door closes, he gets the Savage Lord squeezed in the last seat. That's the second keeper, by the way, so that's interesting as well. I really, I'm really curious how good keeper will be in the coming days, because the card looks really good. <laughs> I think the flexibility in the card looks really strong, and that combined with the fact that it's in Paladin, because you can play so many, just your tokens are enough to make a card good, but a lot of decks are running it there that run Creeper as well, so there's so many targets to buff up. It actually works really, really well with the champions, so I wonder, do you even cut one Shredder? Oh, um, that, that, that's going maybe would, a little bit crazy. I would Everyone say that the card you cut are things like Murloc Knights, Lucio Champions, and maybe you don't run Blessing of Kings instead. Yeah. But you definitely want to keep Consecration. and Yeah, one Consecration at least. Yes, so I, I would assume that you probably end up replacing those, mm, like that Murloc Knight stuff. Yeah, and Blessings. Makes sense. We haven't seen Murloc Knight much in this None tournament at all, in fact. Alright, so both two silvers have been exhausted, and with the second muster, that's going to make swipes really good. Not to mention that he's got a 7 mana Force of Nature Savage War. 
So he picks up another Savage Roar, and that means double combo will always be relevant here. Yeah, exactly. Is there any reason to just swipe face twice with combo? I suppose you're scared of it, right? To telegraph that you have. <laughs> yeah, to just say, exactly. by the way, yeah. <laughs> to, to be fair, do you not think the Harrison and all of the card draw would have just auto tele yeah, like, there's yeah, a The guy's got combo. Well, like, it does, but then the opponent yeah. goes defensive. Like, if you double swipe face, your opponent's like, oh, it's coming. I know it's coming. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, so. Put the fear in. That's what you need to do. Pressure. <laughs> One thing that is also really scary is that Purple has access to a Keeper plus Force Nature Saboteur, so even taunts at late stages yeah. won't effectively stop it. So do you just swipe? Oh, I thought he's gonna BGH here. Oh, innovate Yeah, BGH this down, and then just he's just creating a ball that's so hard to clear, and if he doesn't clear, he's dead. Yeah. So many, so many minions. Just even, even that innovate. Wow. He's got Innervate, which means he can even do other He can more do stuff. whatever he wants. Yeah. He can yeah. just do whatever he wants. It's done. He can, he can Wild Growth for an answer, and then Innervate, Keeper, Double Combo. Oh. <laughs> These Boombots have to be pretty nice. Nice. Uh, he needs to clear everything, right? No, that's not it. No, that, yeah, it's, it's kind of over. No, he's yeah, gonna sludge belcher. He's gonna belcher, and then he can. Oh, but he, he can just silence. He can it. swipe as well. He can well. just silence the belcher. Just silence the belcher. But the, he wouldn't die to just a silence belcher. Like he has to go to 14 hell if he dies. In case. No, because can he kill both what? minions? Yeah, if the boombot <laughs> trades. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. He needs the boombot to clear, right? Here we go. Oh. 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 So that is just game. Wow. Yeah, that's silence come with 20 damage to face. Yeah, he's playing two PG. And he still has innovation. Jesus. Innovate hero power, why not? All right, well, that so. was a good run for Dragon Albert, but he <laughs> has it, so he made it far. Yeah, oh and it's just oh kind of heartbreaking to see that the way this goes. Looks like he is he's pretty pissed. He was talking about Crush and Purple, but it's like, for this day, age and superiority Oh, sorry, Wisdom uh, ex experience. is superior. Experience yeah. is massive. Well, this is his first tournament versus Purple, like, there's definitely a point yeah. there. He did really well, yeah. and I, I really enjoyed casting his games. I would love to cast more in the future. And there is no shame losing to NA champion. And Purple is your winner, and Purple advances to the top eight. So yep. another great player entering the top eight, another known name. Yeah, fantastic job here uh, from Albert to get that far. But I think uh, when you look at some of the top players who advanced from Swiss, you look at Purple being one of the favorites to go really far here. And um, his his Malagos Warlock deck is the de is he's not even playing Paladin. He's just bringing this deck because he thinks it's legitimately one of the best decks out there. So a job well done there to Purple. And yeah, I mean, he actually told go me when, when we were casting, he actually said, because um, I said, how much prep did you know this Maligos Dwallet was going to be so good? He said, well, I went on ladder with it for 80% win rate for like a week. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, I think it's good. It's like, oh, okay. That's enough. actually amazing. That's a pretty reasonable win, win rate, right? Like, like for me, amazing thing is that Purple was so chilled coming to this tournament. And he was like, even while waiting, he just casted one series with us because he was like, yeah, I can do I've it. I've got it's time. <laughs> I've got time. Why he not? Yeah, like, he's just relaxed yeah. and not worried about it because he's put in the time for sure. Uh, well, uh, we're going to move on to our last series of the day, guys. It's going to be uh, our ra last round of 16 match, and then we're going to close out the day pretty strong here in, in the DreamHack Winter Grand Prix. So stay tuned. Uh, we'll be back right after.